Good morning, guys. Today is another Bible study. In today's Bible study, we're going to be doing Ecclesiastics chapter 8. We're going to try to do the whole chapter. It's only 16 verses. They are pretty decent sized verses, but we're going to try to go ahead and get through the entire chapter so that we can get like the whole overview. Hey, you guys, editing Amber here. Uh, I just wanted to make a little public service announcement that I am aware that as Ecclesiastes, not Ecclesiastics. However, I grew up saying Ecclesiastics until like last year and I looked it up and I was like, holy cow, I've been saying this wrong my entire life. So it is ingrained in my mind to say it, Ecclesiastics, but I'm aware that it's Ecclesiastes and I'm sorry that I said it wrong. <laughs> okay, back to the video. So we're just gonna jump right in and read and see what we can get out of this chapter. It is sectioned into three little sections in my Bible. And the first one is keep the king's command. So we're gonna read that one first and then we'll talk about it and then we'll move on to the next section. It says, who is like the wise and who knows the interpretation of things? A man's wisdom makes his face shine, and the hardness of his face change. I say, keep the king's command because of God's oath to him. Be not hasty to go from his presence. Do not take your stand in an evil cause, for he does whatever he pleases. For the word of the king is supreme. And who may say to him, what are you doing? <laughs> Whoever keeps the command will know no evil thing, and the wise heart will know the proper time and the just way. For there is a time and a way for everything, although man's trouble lies heavy on him. For he does not know what is to be, for who can tell him how it will be? No man has power to retain the spirit, or power over the day of death. There is no discharge from war, nor will wickedness deliver those who are given to it. All this I observe while applying my heart to all that is done under the sun, when man had power over man to his hurt. And I forgot to mention that it says the author of Ecclesiastic is kind of unknown, but that in the past some have attributed it to Solomon. Kind of the overview of Ecclesiastics is about like fearing God. Back to verse one, it says, who is like the wise and who knows the interpretation of things? A man's wisdom makes his face shine and the hardness of his face change. So this is kind of a rhetorical question pointing out that there's not very many who are actually wise in the way that they're speaking about and that whenever someone does hold that type of wisdom that you can see it in them. Verse 2 says, I say keep the king's command because of God's oath to him. Be not hasty to go from his presence. Do not take your stand in an evil cause for he does whatever he pleases. 2 and 3. <laughs> So for verse two, I'm going to read the commentary and it says, keep the king's commands. It says the preacher in Ecclesiastes, the author is called the preacher. They're referring to the writer. Uh, the preacher is reminding the king's counselor that he is obligated to help restrain the king from making foolish decisions on account of his oath to God. In the fallen world, there were, there are foolish kings who use imprudent commands, but that does not mean that a counselor is free to disassociate himself completely from his master. At the same time, however, he ought not to exercise such unthinking obedience to the king that he becomes implicated in an evil cause. So just a warning to be watchful of what's going on around him and to make sure that he wasn't um, getting involved in something that wasn't good or of God. I feel like it's a lot about morals and sticking to your morals, even if you are under authority of someone who doesn't carry the same type of morals as you, there is still kind of a way to be associated. Then also keep yourself separate from things that others may be partaking in. I'm going to read verses four through six together. And they say, For the word of the king is supreme, and who may say to him, What are you doing? Whoever keeps the command will know no evil thing, and the wise heart will know the proper time and the just way. For there is a time and a way for everything, although man's troubles lie heavy on him. So here's just pointing out that nobody really has the authority to question what the king is doing. Like, he's going to do what he wants to do, and everybody else is just going to kind of follow him behind him. And then in verse 5 it says, And the wise heart will know the proper time and the just way. So if there is something that is wrong with a king's command, then it says someone who is wise will be able to sense when is a good time and the right way to bring this up to the king. Verses 7 through 9 say, For he does not know what is to be, for who can tell him how it will be? No man has power to retain the spirit or power over the day of death. There is no discharge from war, nor will wickedness deliver those who are given to it. 
All this I observed while applying my heart to all that is done under the sun, when man had power over man to his hurt. So the commentary on this, I know you guys probably don't like hearing me just read the verses and then read the commentary. I guess it's more appealing to watch somebody like give their own thoughts, but I'm just not like confident enough in myself to do that a lot of times. And to be honest, I'm not really that articulate. So a lot of times I, when I read the commentary, I'm like, oh yeah, they said that good. And I don't feel like I can re-say that in a better way. So sometimes I feel like the best way is just to give you guys the commentary. That being said, I'm going to read the commentary on that portion. It is a risky position to offer correction to the king. And one cannot be absolutely certain ahead of time how it will be received. But lest the counselor be intimidated into silent submission. He should remember that no man, not even the king, has power to retain the spirit or power over the day of death. And that wickedness will surely be judged. I guess there is kind of a responsibility there in continually going along with sin. Whenever the spirit tells you that it's something that shouldn't be happening. Because ultimately the king is going to answer to God at some point. And you don't want to be like attached to his commands if they were sinful or wicked. So we're starting a new little section and it's verses 10 through 13. And it's titled, Those Who Fear God Will Do Well. Then I saw the wicked buried. They used to go in and out of the holy place and were praised in the city where they had done such things. This also is vanity because the sentence against an evil deed is not executed speedily. The heart of the children of man is fully set to the devil. Though a sinner does evil a hundred times and prolongs his life, yet I know that it will be well with those who fear God because they fear before him. But it will not be well with the wicked neither will he prolong his days like a shadow because he does not fear before god it says the sentence against an evil deed is not executed spe speedily but so they continue in evil because they don't see any punishment in sight they don't see the consequences of their actions and so therefore they think that they can just do whatever they want have whatever they want and it's all going to be good but then in verse 12 there's a reminder that it will be well for those who do fear God and that ultimately it will not be well for the wicked. The last section is verses 14 through 17 and it is titled, Man Cannot Know God's Ways. We're going to do verse 14 and 15. There is a vanity that takes place on earth that there are righteous people to whom it happens according to the deeds of the wicked. And there are wicked people to whom it happens according to the deeds of the righteous. I said that this also is vanity, and I commend joy, for man has nothing better under the sun but to eat and drink and be joyful, for this will go with him in his toil through the days of his life that God has given him under the sun. It's kind of contrasting that, like, the wicked are getting everything that they want, and the righteous are are living a much lower lifestyle oh, that's not really seen as fair and you're like well they're really bad why do they get everything that they want and we try to be good and humble and kind and gentle and loving and and we have nothing on this earth the commentary talks about how that's a mystery that can't really be solved like we don't know god's reason for that it's kind of hard to watch those who are participating in evil and wicked things get everything that they want and obtain success in this life like you said that's something that we're never going to understand and so we shouldn't our focus shouldn't be there our focus should be on following what god says is right we have to trust his ways and i think a lot of times the things that god gives us gifts us with here on this earth are little tiny things and i think that you have to be kind of pulled away from the world to be able to enjoy those things all right so then last up is verses 16 and 17 and they say when I applied my heart to know wisdom and to see the business that is done on earth, how neither day nor night do one's eyes see sleep. I saw all the work of God, that man cannot find out the work that is done under the sun. However, much man may toil in seeking, he will not find it out. Even though a wise man claims to know, he cannot find it out. So to wrap up his point here, where it says man cannot find out the work that is done under the sun, basically pointing out that we're never going to understand it and we're just going to have to accept that we can't understand it. Uh, the commentary says, True wisdom includes the humility to admit that man cannot fully figure out all of the reality in a fallen world. We're never going to understand it all. We're never going to understand why some have and why others don't. That's not where our focus needs to be. But also, if we go back to the beginning of what we were reading, when we do see something that isn't good, 
and we can change it, then we should definitely be wise in how we address the situation. Um, but we answer to God first, not man. So I think that's important to remember. That is it for this Bible study. I hope you guys enjoyed Bible studying with me. If you like Bible studies like this, we have a bunch of them on our channel, or you can like and subscribe and hit the notification bell and you will see whenever we upload new ones every Monday. And then we also upload on Wednesdays and Fridays. Wednesdays are some other type of faith-based content. And then Fridays we do something fun, which is usually food, fashion, makeup, DIYs, anything like that that just looks fun to us for the day. So I hope you guys will check those out as well. Other than that, I hope you have a good day, have a good week, and we will see you guys in the next one. Don't forget to shine. Bye.